Let's run an Anthem arc calibration on my 7.2.4 brand new home theater 2.0 setup. All right, so what do we need to do this? Anthem arc calibration. One, you need a computer. I've got my laptop here. This is a MacBook Pro M1 Pro 16 inch, one of the late 2021 models. I've got the microphone itself, of course, that came with the Anthem AVM70, which is what we'll be calibrating. And that's on this microphone stand by Samson. I bought that thing so long ago, I don't even remember. I got it off Amazon, I'm sure, 20 bucks or something. But very adjustable. We can raise, lower, twist, turn, and do all the manipulations that we need to put the microphone in the right spot. The USB-C to USB-A cable that came with the Anthem processor. And then I've got a just a monoprice, I think that is, six foot USB-A male to female extension cable. So we'll be calibrating in there, of course, in the theater room. But I don't want to be in the theater room when I run the cal. So that's the that's the cable I already had, extension cable I already had. You can see we're set up basically by the door here, giving me the ability to position the microphone, leave the room, come out here, start the measurements, let them finish, go in, move the microphone, and so on. And then, of course, this MacBook, like a lot of devices now, doesn't have USB-A ports, so I have the Apple USB-A to USB-C adapter. So let's get this whole three-cable microphone setup wired up. <clears throat> so the USB-C included cable clips into the bottom of the microphone itself. We're going to put that male end into the female end of the extension cable. The extension cable goes into the adapter and finally the adapter goes into the laptop. One of the things I like to do is make sure that the right microphone is selected and of course you have to have the security access granted. So if you go into your security and privacy and you go to the microphone, you got to make sure that Arc Genesis is selected. Of course, I've already downloaded the Arc Genesis app for Mac. You can get that off of the Anthem web pages. And then I like to go in to the sound settings and the microphone itself input and make sure that the Arc microphone is selected. I've had a little funkiness with the Arc app, the Arc, Arc program a bit where it wasn't registering the, the sound of the microphone. I found that this helps making sure that it's selected as the active mic. Now I'm going to actually start the ARC software. Go ahead and blow this up. So we can see maybe, well, maybe tough to see. I've got a couple of previous ARC runs in here, but we can go here to launch ARC. My AVM70 is, is, of course, connected and already powered on for the main zone, so I can connect, uh, connect to it. I don't know why it does this. Connection complete, but it gives you a countdown for five seconds there. And then you get this con configure measurement screen. The first box, device-specific settings, we're, we're choosing what the height positions are doing. I've got height one set up for my front in ceiling, my top fronts, height two for my top rears and I'm not using height three. I have a 7.2.4 speaker subwoofer configuration in the room right now. Over here, you can name the measurement. So I like to, I'm gonna, I'm actually trying to come up with a framework to know which ones I'm using and which profiles are set because I don't think Anthem does a great job of telling you what's currently loaded into the processor. So I'm gonna name this uh, Home Theater 7.2.4 arc one and my schema is going to be to increment that number that final number each time i i do this or because i'm going to be making a bunch of changes here very quickly coming up so i expect to be rerunning arc a few times and i want to know which which one i'm on i'm only using the first measurement here 
Um, you can do five to 10 positions. I'm just gonna do five right now. And then you pick which speakers you want active in the config. So fronts have to be part of it. Of course, I have a center, I have uh, rear surrounds, no wides, I have side surrounds, and then the height one and the height two, no height three, and I have two subwoofers in the configuration, like I mentioned. This measurement is on, by default, you, I guess you have to measure number one, but down here you can see there's, there's four possible measurements corresponding to the different profiles and such, and those are all disabled. I'm, I'm only using the one. So I'm gonna continue, select the microphone, yes, and then we're ready to take the first measurement. So the speaker to be measured or being measured at the moment in time as this runs will be in red, everything else is in black, and it wants us to position for the first position, which is basically your center sweet spot. So there's that setup, the microphone sitting in the center sweet spot right in the middle of the couch. They tell you to go at ear level, so I kind of sat next to it and roughly gauged the height at ear level. And there's also a little circle on the front of the microphone and a sticker on there that tells you point the circle towards the front of the room. So that's, that's done. And again, I've got my cable here running out the door. So I'm gonna close the doors, we'll get started. All right, so that's the full position one. One thing that I would mention as well going back is I, I kind of do recommend maybe before you start doing this to fully power cycle your processor or your receiver, meaning with the ARC software off, when everything's ready, your microphone's connected, it's selected, you're ready to go, turn your, turn your processor or your receiver off and then give it a couple seconds and power it back on. Some of this it gets a little flaky, I guess, is what it boils down to. So you want as clean of a sequence, startup sequence, as clean of a startup sequence and such as you can get. So position two there is to the left of the main one. I'm about two and a half feet over to the side. As you move the mic, you need to remember to kind of keep, readjust the microphone itself in the new position so it's vertical. Keep it at ear level for these, these front positions and make sure that that circle, rotate it so that circle's pointing forward. So let's run the second one. All right, that's number two. Position three is just similar, but on the opposite side of the main seating position, about two and a half feet or so over to the right is where I'm gonna put my mic. So I move the microphone over, we'll start measurement three or position three. One of the things I really wish they would add to this at some point is the ability to remeasure if something didn't go right, there was a noise maybe during some of the speakers. I think Dirac lets you do that very easily. Anthem Arc doesn't seem to, but I'd really like to be able to pop back to measurement two after it finished and say, uh, re-record, you know, height one or, or the left speaker, something like that. But I don't see any real facility in the software to do that. In any case, let's do number three. So that's number three. Position four is behind the seating and kind of in between where one and two and one and three was. So for reference, you can kind of see where I'm at there for position four, a little bit up in behind the seating area and again between what was position one and what was position two. And then last for this one, position five, I'm just gonna spin the microphone right in the same spot. I like to put it in the middle like that, between like four and five or, or two and three, and then that way you make sure you get kind of an even um, an even positioning. Just rotate the microphone around, leave it in place, but just spin it to the other side. And again, always making sure to adjust it vertically and spin it so that that dot's facing forward. 
All right, so once it finishes, it's going to kick right into this. Please wait while Arc calculates your curves. An upload is available. Arc Genesis is ready to upload corrections. Select Upload Now to proceed. I like to just dump them in right away. Upload. Jumps right to 80% and then takes a few seconds from there. There we go, counting up. And 100, upload complete. And then from here, there's a couple of neat things. You're able to obviously look at your results. And we can see in these graphs, the red line is the measured line, the, the combined measurement line. The black line is the target curve by default, whatever, what they set to. And the green line, which in my case really hugs the black line very nicely, is the calibrated curve. One of the things worth I always do as well is to create a PDF of the results. So you can generate a PDF out of here. I'm going to save that to downloads and I'm going to save it as the ARC here 7.2.4 HT1. Save. That'll generate the document. Here it is. It's pretty neat. It shows you a lot of the same curve information. And then at the very bottom, it captures your settings, your profile details, and so on. So for reference, it's nice, nice to have that. I've seen people upload the PDFs to like AVS Forum and other places, the Arc Genesis thread, if they're getting some results or they want to have some people that might know more about the calibration effect uh, or calibration process comments on what they're doing. So that's pretty neat. Also in the tool here, there's this curve viewer you can pop up and you can look at any of your speakers from different points of view. There's, uh, you can see all measurements, combined measurement, unaltered with level adjustment and with base management, as well as the target curve and the corrected curve. And that's the actual correction being applied on the bottom there. And you can kind of zoom and dig into all of these more, more deeply. The other thing that's pretty neat in here is the ability to go back to the adjust arc settings. And if you continue through here, you can see more details about what it's, what it's done to your speaker levels. But here's the sweet spot screen where you can actually adjust your crossovers and roll offs and base management and correction frequency caps and all that sort of thing. And the first box here, they call it the system wide target. This actually lets you define your curves. It's not quite as nice as Dirac where you can just import a specific curve file and have it fit. And I need to learn more about this directly. There's quite a lot that you can see and do in here with those settings. And based on your measurements, if you make any changes, it'll recalculate the filters. So the measurement data stays. You can change the, uh, change the application of the filters against those measurements and then of course re-upload. Re thing that I want to make sure to show is to save this. So I can save the ARC file as a .arc3 file itself and I'm going to save it with all the same profile here. ARC 7.2.4 HT1. Save. Puts the file in my file system and I can open that up in the software, make changes, make adjustments, investigate and tweak it and then push you know another another a re-upload of adjusted filters and so on to the device. Really cool. So that's a kind of a quick run and an investigation of the Anthem Arc software on my 7.2.4 Home Theater 2.0 that's using the Anthem AVM70, the Parasound amplifiers, and all the Focal 1000 series in-walls along with the Arundel Sound 1723 2S subwoofer pair. Pretty cool. Hope that helps. If you're thinking about Anthem equipment, I've been really impressed with it so far. I'm looking, looking forward to getting more detailed, particularly with those settings and so on to maybe tune my curve and, and really control and adjust and tweak the capabilities and the sound and the presentation and so on of my room. And as I understand it, this software is going to get more features. It's due to get like phase control and better phase integration with subwoofers. The, the current platform of Anthem products is probably going to stick around as is for a few years and we should see quite a bit in the way of software upgrades 
and capabilities and so on and such being added. Really cool. Um, I give it a thumbs up. I'm happy with the process. It's not overly complex, but it's still at the same time very powerful and it has quite a bit to learn to use it. Kitties are meowing. Quite a bit to learn to use it to its full potential. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Look down in the description below for ways to support the channel and come on back for more. Thanks.